I welcome the debate today as it gives a, a chance for the public to hear the finer details behind the headline-grabbing slogans that we've seen over the past uh, number of days. The Minister Taoiseach and a number of deputies have outlined already the broader context of which this €13 billion Euro sits. This is not just about €13 billion, Euro, it's about a fundamental pillar of the Irish economy, a pillar which has yielded so much positives for this country and current generations. We have to be very much aware of who is watching this debate. I would guess not only workers and decision makers in current organisations situated in Ireland are watching this, but also potential investors who are in the process of making a decision on Ireland are also watching closely. We need to be very careful of the language we use as not to harm the international marketability and reputation of Ireland as a place to invest and subsequently create jobs. I speak as a person who has worked in the private sector all my adult life. Not only have I worked directly for a multinational, but I have also worked for a small indigenous company which was a service provider to multinationals for many years. I want to send a message today that I want foreign direct investment to continue coming to Ireland. I want them to invest here. We have a highly educated workforce, industrial stability, strong infrastructure, access to the common market and a competitive tax rate. This has been fostered and developed over a period of time from hard economic lessons learned by generations of the past. Like any other, di like any other discipline, the more successful we are at it, the better we become and thus beat the competition. Obviously competition will always be present and I also welcome it as it forces us to do our jobs better and continue to innovate. But I continue to welcome the agenda by the European, or, or, but I don't welcome the agenda by the European Commission's um, in trying to bring about a common tax base in eroding our competitiveness. I do embrace the ideals of the European movement. There's no question it has fulfilled its objective in fostering economic cooperation and focusing on similarities, thus sustaining the longest term of peace in the continent has ever seen. However, we are a sovereign nation and I respect that above all. I campaigned and voted for both Lisbon treaties in the assurance that our, our corporation tax was not part of the agenda and could not be compromised or changed by an outside European authority. Through the economic depravity of the, er of the years gone by, Ireland was forced to rethink its economic vision. The vision in the 80s and 90s became increasingly outward and targeted towards foreign direct investment. This was a no no-brainer to me. We had to do it. We must remember that Ireland in the early 1990s was economically worlds apart from where it is today. I remember entering senior cycle in school to be told that my options were civil service, stay in college for as long as you can afford it if you can, or you can immigrate. The private sector's appeal and attraction was very much off the table. However, by the time I started college in the mid-90s, all that had changed, and for the better, due to the influx of multinationals, due to the tax, social partnership and educational policies. The University of Limerick was born through NIHE, which was built in Plassey Technological Park, Park as a provider of an educated workforce to the multinational electronic manufacturing companies that were situated there at the time. It worked. This was in the backdrop of increased competition coming down the tracks from emerging eco economies in Europe and Eastern Europe due to the revolt against communism and hard left administrations and policies in situ at the time. More and more companies located to Ireland. There was more jobs, more work, better opportunities which fostered new industrial innovation, confidence and increased self-belief and education in a new generation. Education was one of the major positives to come from these companies and the new economy. This cannot be stated enough and it has hu a huge byproduct of foreign direct investment. It changed the face of Ireland. I know so many people in Limerick who have been given the opportunity to study as part of their job, gain qualifications, an opportunity that they would have not ever got if they had not been in that position. These are people who may, not through, who may through a myriad of reasons, may have not had the opportunity to avail of education in their early lives. This in turn has allowed and fostered innovation and creativity. I heard countless times today the indigenous company being pitched against the multinational, but how many of these smaller indigenous companies have been formed out of knowledge, experience and networks acquired for working with these multinationals? Uh, Kevin Cole, I'm going to conclude. I could, I could stay here for the next half hour on this. I want to conclude by the government to say that the government has my full backing. I want to state that the workers in these multinationals, you on the lines, the manufacturing lines, you in accounts, you, in serving, you serving in the canteen, you in HR, you in engineering, you in the stores, you in the warehouse, that you have my unequivocal support in helping secure your jobs, your future, your increased opportunities and education by continuing to, continuing to attract and sustain the companies you work in. I want to say to you, the recruiter, the bartender, the deli assistant, the child minder, the taxi driver who makes a living from the customer who is working in the multinational company, you have my unequivocal support in sustaining your jobs and sustaining your customers. I want to say to the international investors who are looking at investing and watching this debate, come to Ireland. We offer an English-speaking, educated workforce, industrial stability and access to the single market and a very uh, competitive corporation tax rate of 12.5%. 
There is a reason why others are situated here, and we have learned every time that they have relocated to make the transition and start up as seamless as possible. We have the expertise and the know-how to do this. We need to continue this investment. Please do not go back to the 80s, please.